So when people first start looking at maps, they can seem very daunting and people seem to overcomplicate them. So the first thing we're going to learn about is map symbols so that we can identify where we are on a map or what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is break that down into three different types of symbols. We're going to have spot features or point features, line or linear features and area features. So a spot feature or a point feature, which is the first one we're going to look at, it would be something like a car park or a pub or public house or a phone box. So if we zoom into this village here, you can see that in Longborough here, there's a public house here and there's one here. There's also a phone box here. This symbol here is a phone box. This black looks like a phone symbol. But what's important about this phone box is there is a small what, um, black fine line that travels left towards this road here, this orange road. Now what that's doing is that's pointing out exactly where that phone box is. So though a feature might be fairly large, obviously in real life a phone box is not going to be the width of that road. Just across the road from the phone box I can see it says PO, that means post office. So there are lots of symbols on maps. There will be car parks, viewing areas, um, museums, information centres, train stations. So it's really important that you pick up a map and you have a look in the corner of each ordnance survey map and it will have a key. You can also research these online, but points of points features or spot features are very important because if you're walking along and you can see a church, there are two different types of churches. One is a round church with a cross on top and one is a square church with a cross on top. So it's very important you know which church you're near. So what's the difference? Well, if you were looking at a church and it had a spire, it would be a round symbol with a cross on top. And if it was a square fort-like church, it would be a square symbol with a cross on top. So you need to familiarise yourselves with different symbols so that when you are out walking, out on an expedition, you can identify exactly where you are on the map. So the next type of feature we'll be looking at will be line or linear features. So that's roads, rivers, power lines, fences and walls. So if we look closely, the first one we're going to look at is roads. And if we just zoom in the same, t same area on the map, we can see that this road here, this main road here, is a red road. So the red road would be an A road, that's this one here. Now this is obviously a main road, very fast, it can be up to two lanes on each side, and can be quite dangerous to even cross, let alone walk down, and it's something that really you should not be walking along. And these roads go across the maps, and go from big town to big town. Off of these roads though we have orange roads on the maps and these are B roads. B roads still are very um, or can be very fast they're not quite as wide and they are a little bit safer although we do still try and avoid roads where we can so a significant B road on this map is just down there so you can see here in this in this image I've got a B road here the problem with B roads is that they are driven uh, still quite fast and there's a lot of blind corners so you need to be very careful when you're on a B road. The next type of road we're going to look at is these yellow roads here. So these yellow roads are um, tracks or lanes or very narrow um, smaller roads that are usually leading to a farm or a barn or a small village. They're not main roads used by lots of people and they're mostly used by local people. Now although they're less busy and they are um, should be slower, unfortunately they're usually driven by local people who know the roads very well and they're not expecting to come across a group of walkers. So you still need to be very careful on these roads. So we use roads to determine where we are, looking at junctions, looking at signs if we get to a junction about which way a town or a village might be. And you can use this as a good way to look at where you are on a map. If you would see this line here that travels up, this black sharp line that travels up, that's a railway. 
Railways are obviously very good to navigate from because there's not many around. So you know if you reach a railway, you know that you're somewhere on the railway crossing. Whereas if you reach a road, you might be crossing a different road to what you think you're crossing. The other types of linear point we're going to look at now are these fine black lines that make up squares and that is if I just zoom in and these here so these black lines here are boundary lines of fields so it may be that you are walking up this path here and you're crossing from this road you're going past one boundary on your right another boundary on your, your right you're crossing over one, which could mean there's a stile or a, a kissing gate, uh, another boundary here, and then you reach a road. So you can literally count how many boundaries you go over. Now, a boundary is quite a um, is is terminology which could be used for a few things. So it could be a fence, it could be a bush line, it might be um, a series of gates. It might be just that the um, fields are different colours and there's a very small bit of shrubbery that, that travels along the ground. So you need to be very aware that these fine lines could mean various things. They also, in places like South Wales and, and, and North Wales and, and areas um, with old farming, it could be that there's some, an old wall there and you could be looking at an old wall, which are really good for boundaries and boundary lines because you can tell exactly where you are and how many you've crossed. So they're a very good way of navigating and it's very good to count how many fields you've crossed since the last time you were on a path that you knew. So the next linear point we're going to look at is a river. So if you zoom into this area of the map here, you can see there's a blue squiggly line and this is a river. Now, although a lot of people use rivers for navigation because you can look at where maybe you might be. If you're by a canal, there might be locks. You can look at the turns in the river. Often rivers can be quite deceiving because if it's been a dry summer, rivers might be very low or not even there at all. And if, there's, if it says there's a bridge there, if it says FB, that's a spot point by river, that means a footbridge, that could not be there because it could be flooded. So you need to be very wary when using rivers to navigate from. So we've discussed point or spot features and we've discussed line or linear features. So now we're going to look at area features, our final um, type of feature that we're going to break our maps down to. So what we're looking at here, now there's in a bronze level area like this, we're, there's not going to be that many different types of area features. So there's not much marsh around that we need to look at. But there is this very significant wooded area here, Borton Woods. Now that is exactly what it says it is. It is a wooded area and you can see that it's green, it's shaded green with small green trees in it. Now this would suggest that it is a wooded area and if you look it's got a fine black line along the bottom and if we remember from looking at the linear features that would mean that would suggest that there's a boundary there. So that might be fenced off, it might be have a wall around it. Now what's good about this is that we can tell from where we are, we can tell where we are from looking at the shape of a wooded area, especially if it's got a boundary around it. The problem if it hasn't got a boundary around it and what you need to be aware of is that trees can be chopped down, extra trees can be planted and so the wooded area could look a different shape to what you think you're looking at or where you think you are. So. What we do is, is we, look at, we look at maybe the boundary line of that and if we were stood, say, here, we'd be able to see that we're at the corner of that woods. Now, there are other woods around, so you might need to take those into account. And we try to look for three points of three different types of feature to identify where we are. And if we can only find two, then it might suggest we're in a different place to what we think we are. Now, these areas here in between our boundary lines are fields. So fields could be um, fields that farmers are using for crops. It could just be one that's left for grazing. So we can't, we can't say exactly what is in the field, but we can say there is a field there. Now there are some other areas that we could look for um, that might be marshy, which might have small green squiggly lines on. So it's worth again looking at your map key and learning different types of area features because you would want to avoid marshy ground. 
Now there is one more type of feature that I haven't mentioned which comes into almost all of these, especially the line or linear features, that are extremely important for you to learn. And that is what a path looks like. So we're going to be looking at this area here where there's this green dashed line that comes across here and there's a dashed line up there with diamonds on it. And these are all different types of path. So whether they're a bridal path or whether they're a footpath or whether they're a small footpath or a wide footpath. So what I'd like you to do is to have a look at your map keys and try and learn what these different things mean. Now generally speaking, if it's a dashed green line with or without diamonds or a small um, dotted black line or dashed black line, then it usually is a footpath as a general rule. But it's worth looking at the maps and learning about those before planning your route. So good luck.